Alex is going to be playing. I, it's so interesting that you guys mm -hmm. chose to uh, to start with this kind of um, tutorial where you're actually little kids. <laughs> I was like, this is fascinating mm -hmm. and amazing. Yes, uh, exactly. So uh, the game, for those who don't know, it's an RTS, right? So a real-time strategy game. But here in this tutorial, we somehow need to teach the uh, people how how the mechanics work, uh, right? So we thought it's a pretty cool uh, way to make it in this kind of uh, snow fight scene because not only does it give you the uh, like basics of the game, but it also gives you some background story of the main characters of the game because this young lady there is Anna, who's the hero for the Polania faction. And it gives the characters actually way more um, substance, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it, it's always good to have like an organic feel when you're doing that as, as opposed to it just being this like really stiff, like you have to read a bunch of texts, you know, a bunch of texts. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what was your... Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, pr press A and D to move the camera and stuff. So here it's like a little bit more gamification, right? Yeah. So that's the word, I guess. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> So what was your uh, what was the inspiration behind uh, Iron Harvest? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, insp or the biggest in in well, gameplay wise, the biggest inspiration are games like Company of Heroes, Dawn of War, and Warcraft Three. So it's more this uh, classical RTS, and like gameplay wise, the, the closest is probably Company of Heroes. If you remember that game, where you have to take yeah, cover, yeah. you cannot just simply send your troops uh, to the front line. You have to protect them and keep them alive because they're very precious and very expensive so it's a very tactical and, and strategic rts actually and from the uh, world and the design it's inspired and uh, by jakub kozalski which is a polish artist his artwork and he actually created this 1920 plus universe that's uh, also in the name iron harvest there's like a subtitle 1920 plus that's the name of the universe and in this universe you have an alternative post world war 1 uh, where the people instead of tanks were using giant mechs actually to uh, uh, yeah to to fight and um, we call this era the diesel punk area so steampunk is a little bit earlier yeah. cyberpunk later and this uh, 1900s uh, uh, is the diesel punk era and that's where we are playing and this is where uh, everything what where's everything based on that's that's super interesting so mm -hmm. uh, yeah so what role do you play on the team just curious excuse me come again what what do you do on the team i'm just curious Oh yeah, so I'm Toby. I'm the PR manager for this okay. uh, for this game. So I'm I'm the one who's uh, showing his beard into the camera and <laughs> tell you how great the game is. But actually, uh, actually, yeah, I, I'm taking the game. I'm traveling the world with it, and I'm trying to show it to the people. And actually, that's what we did since the Kickstarter campaign, yeah. uh, showing the game and collecting feedback. And that's what what we are also doing right now. Uh, there's a closed beta for uh, Iron Harvest, but the big announcement if i can say it like that from tomorrow there will be a demo on steam so everyone can try at least a little bit of iron harvest before it actually releases and that's important for us because we are collecting feedback and try to implement as much as possible uh into the game there's a multiplayer component where you're fighting against your friends and that type of thing uh, very right. So uh, in this RTS, of course, there's a big campaign. That's the part which is uh, inspired by uh, Warcraft 3, so with the hero oh, okay. units and the deep, uh, deep uh, single-player campaign. So there will be uh, planned right now 21 missions uh, for the single-player campaign. But of course, as you said, there's also a multiplayer, which I like a bit more than the single-player, but just me personally, because uh, I believe that having this huge mech fight, stomping through buildings, outrunning your opponent, outsmarting your friend, is even more interesting than fighting AI. But that's just me. So if you are yeah. more into the single-player part, then go ahead. He got defeated. <laughs> what can in, you tell in the tutorial? In the, yeah, in the tutorial <laughs> with snowballs. Nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, no diesel. Uh, not looking for no diesel, reason. but ha ha hard eyes. You can try a skirmish <laughs> battle if you want, because then you okay. can see more than just throwing eyes. 
Yeah. And then if you if you're quick enough, you will be even able to to build some mechs and show the people how the hey, someone in the chat is writing Snowpunk. Yeah. Snowpunk. Snowpunk. That that's is, the that's tu tutorial. Dope. Exactly. That's dope. That's really dope. Can you tell us a, a little bit about yeah. the story while we get back and go try a skirmish? Of course. So the story is, well, in this 1920 plus universe, there's three factions in, well, there's more factions, but in the game, there's three factions. We have Polania, which is something like alternative Poland, uh, Rusviet, something like alternative Russia, and uh, Saxony, which is something like alternative Germany, and they are fighting each other in in iron harvest so and the idea is that i don't want to spoil too much about the single player of course but the idea is that uh there is some kind of super weapon somehow somehow someone has it some some everyone wants it and all the campaigns are actually trying to get to this point who gets the weapon who will take uh charge who will be the powerful uh source in the end of the game and uh that's like uh big overview of the campaign but of course uh, for every f campaign for each faction we have seven missions so you will uh, see the different angles on the game and the different parts of the game from different views and uh, eventually find out that who seems bad isn't that bad and so on so there's some plot twists and stuff and the missions should be as unique as possible cool you're, you're gonna have to each other. You're gonna have to run us through this as he starts getting things mm -hmm. I'm going to moving. Iron Mind. So first of all, exactly. So that's the company of hero style gameplay where you have there's no if you if you think of a, a command conquer or something, you have to collect your Tiberium here. You have to conquer those iron mines and oil pumps, and they will then over time uh, generate some resources for you so you the big idea is it's it's something like moving the front line back and forth all the time you have to recapture resource points they will generate something but the opponent can take them from you at every moment and so on the two, two units you have right now is regular rifleman and engineers those engineers uh with the uh yeah these ones exactly they have they are uh, building base they're pretty much building your base so if you push h or put on the building push the building button on the bottom right when you uh, click the engineer then you can build some some uh, buildings like barracks and and a workshop in your in your base and as i said it's moving the front line back and forth so on the mini map on the left side you can see how the opponent oh, is slowly cool. conquering resource points and those uh, <laughs> flags there and it's it's a bit like capture the flag so if if the opponent takes them then there's a counter which you can see on the top the winning points, victory points, which I personally don't like. I'm for the inhalation, fighting the opponent till yeah. the end. But yeah, winning, sneaky win with victory points is, of course, also possible. There's no snowballs so here. If you, if, no snowballs. Yeah, if, bullets if, if you, if you, I'm attacking these guys. <laughs> oh, they ran you, away. Yes, exactly. You can, they saw you probably and or they took the oil pump and then now they're getting something different so on the map you have the oil pump you have crates in those crates they can be weapons they can be uh, resources they can be uh for ex there's field gun for example weapons lying around and you can adapt on the battlefield while playing the game and pr the coolest thing i believe is not only the covering system that you have to take cover when you're attacking someone but when you have a mech or something then you can walk through buildings and just ignore all the cover because they're way too big and will just stomp through that's awesome i would heavily recommend to start building a base because you took all your units especially the engineers who is not good at shooting uh -huh. And you took them to yeah this house yes the house button if you click on the house button the, then you can one? build for example the barracks barracks or workshop and okay. put it in the base it's the thing you neglected in the very first <laughs> moment <laughs> yeah. Tobias going in on yeah. Alex uh, learning is fun yeah. <laughs> although painful. I mean it's it's as always it's you have to get the basics and then and that's why the the snowball uh, that's what the snowball uh, tutorial was trying to teach you that of course how to move on the battlefield but also how to build your uh, base and take care of it Our barracks is under attack. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> my barracks is so under it's attack. getting oh, I... by the way my 
I'm, I'm trying to right now talk to you via my cell phone, and I'm using mobile data. So if anything happens, then <laughs> yeah. uh, just so you know. <laughs> They'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Uh, but it seems to work, so I have my makeshift streaming. You no, your your stream is amazing, by the way. When we we saw your camera, it's like better than like ninety percent other. You know what I mean? Looks super pristine. <laughs> Thank you, cell phone manufacturer. I feel like I have uh, lost all my units I, and my base. So you you were learn you were learning the hard way. How about <laughs> we start again? And okay. you you. You use one of those units you have there, the rifleman, uh -huh. to capture resource points, and the other one, the engineers, to immediately start to build something, and then okay. you send out the engineers as well. So, I'll so let's restart. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For instance. Are you sure you want to restart? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, so, I do. I sure am. <laughs> of of course, of course, it's uh, the base building is just well. The focus is not on the base building. You need a base to be able to build units. Of course, uh, that's where you get your your uh, max and your soldiers. However, the the uh, focus on the game will always be on the front line of the battlefield. So what actually do, uh, happens is that you are trying to protect your resource points at all at all time. You are trying to push the the enemy back and so on. And what's what's really interesting, you maybe you saw it when your units died. Uh, whenever you kill a uh, mm -hmm. as um, a, a human unit, they will drop their weapons. Oh, so let's cool. say you are kill, killing, I don't know, a flamethrower unit, then you can tell your engineers to pick up the flamethrowers and they upgrade to become flamethrower units. So a potentially weak unit becomes a potentially very strong unit. However, you then lose the engineers and become flamethrower. So this gives you a lot of independence and, and flexibility on the battlefield, which is pretty cool. So let's say the opponent is attacking you with tanks or something, and you really need to get some cannons quickly to get them down and to tank cannons. Then just try to pick up cannons if, if you're lucky enough to find them anywhere, somewhere. So, so we have to collect we have to push for more resources. So you can either pick up the crates lying around. You can see them on the map. There are those white boxes. Those are weapon crates or resource crates. I see. Or, uh, yeah, exactly oh, those cool. ones. And if you, it's a weapon crate, so inside there will be a weapon, but there's also oil crates and uh, iron crates. And if you if you uh, yeah go to the resource points, then you can capture them as well. In your HQ, the building, the only building you have currently, you can also build uh, basic units. So you could build another engineer, for example, so you have three units instead of two. What is very important for you, I guess, is the retreat button. So once you, once one of your units... Uh, no, you are laughing, but actually it really <laughs> helps you to survive. Because in, in same as in Company of Heroes, you cannot uh, afford to rebuild so many units. So you need to keep them alive. At, exactly, you push... You Perfect, perfect. You just push the uh, R button or the uh, button on the bottom right, oh, and nice. they will get a hit, hit. They will get a hit point bonus, and they are running back to their HQ where you can repair them or heal them. Okay. So okay. once they arrive at the, at the at at your HQ, they will lose this small arrow on the head, and if you push R again, you will replenish the unit. Okay. R or the bottom bottom the top left uh, button. So, Tobias, when is uh, when is the release? The release uh, is on the well, but this joke only works in Europe. However, the game is called 19, uh, Iron Harvest 1920 plus 1920, which is the first of oh, September 2020. Okay. okay, nice. Only only works in Europe though. So uh, it's in, in a few in a few weeks in a few months. There's the uh, uh, Iron Harvest is releasing, mm -hmm. but. And that's a very important and very cool part. From tomorrow, you can get your demo on Steam for free. So you can try it for several days. So it's from June 16th to uh, June 22nd. You can try it, give your feedback, and try to stay alive a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely be practicing. The game is the game is awesome. It's it's very gorgeous. I love you know playing the beginning part of it. I'm definitely going to be playing it. Uh, you can wish list it now. Exactly. So yes. go Steam, Epic, wherever, whatever shop you like, go there and you can wishlist it and 
try it if you go to Steam. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tobias. It was it was amazing having you. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was great. Yeah, for sure. All right.